Hey, good morning all. I've had a lot of questions about these shapes I've been making recently. Seahorse, humpback whale, hammerhead shark, loads of hairs, and I will do a video on how I make them. Now, they're not simple just uh, silhouette shape cutouts. Like that's basically a, just a, a rough cutout. I've used a router bit on the edge to give it a bit of depth. But on some of these, like the whale, I actually try to give it more of a 3D effect. Now, what I'm using is just regular pine. This is uh, 8 inches. Um, or it's like 200 mil by 25 mil. And it uh, works really good. What I do is I get an image onto the board. So I use, I go online, I find something I like, or something that's been requested or commissioned, and uh, draw or trace the image onto the board. There's the hammerhead, and then here's two versions of crows, which I will be doing for this video. All right, so next step is going to be to use the jigsaw, cut out the rough shape, and then I'll get them on the bandsaw and get a finer detail. All right, so there's our shapes cut out. Now, in case you're wondering why I have done these other cuts here with the jigsaw, making relief cuts, Want to use the bandsaw? No, it's a bandsaw. It's not a scroll saw. It can't do really tight turns. It's you do straight turns with a bit of an angle. I've broken enough blades to uh, trying to do these, uh, treating it like a scroll saw. Um, so yeah, the the more relief cuts you can do, the less curves you do on your bandsaw, the longer it's going to last. The shark, obviously, being the uh, one of the worst culprits. Any little tight corner. I've tried to do a relief cut because A, I don't want to back it off too much on the blade. I don't want to stress the blade too much. Okay, let me get the bandsaw set up. Alright, bandsaw's all set up. It's just one of the uh, little bench top uh, bandsaws. I'm using a quarter inch blade, probably uh, 6 TPI. So it's going to be a slightly rough cut. And hopefully I don't break the blade. Amazingly enough, I spoke too soon just now, and I broke my bandsaw blade. So I've broken out my old uh, scroll saw. This is a one of the Scurfix Titan scroll saws. I do not recommend this scroll saw. Um, it's a pin blade, which I think are not very good in the first place, and it does not cut very smoothly. But uh, well, I'll show. You.
See, that's one of the things with this. It cuts so rough. So it's just broken off that tip. So I have to figure that out somehow. But I shall carry on. Okay, that is the hammerhead carved out. I had to use the uh, scroll saw, so it took a little while. Um, scroll saw works pretty well, it's just carving through one inch thick board takes time. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, round off the edges. I'll use one of my little cheapy, cheapy bits. Use that one um, in my little handheld router. Okay, I've got my roundover bit and my little uh, dual router. I'm just going to get that set up. My nice big base plate from Dave Bronson lets me control this pretty well. And I'm just going to run around the outside. I, I just I was thinking about this, so I'm talk about um, router base plates for a minute. Like I said I got this one, I had this one made for me by uh, Dave Brunson, he's one of the members on here somewhere. That is your normal size of a base plate. Yeah, which is fine, they work great. Until you're trying to do something like this, you need to be able to anchor one side of the base plate and move that around. If you're trying to do it like this, you're going to find you're going to drop and you're going to well, basically just mess it up. That's another one. That one's even smaller. So I do recommend a bigger base plate, one centimeter thick. They just make life so much easier. Okay, so going back to this. Now we've got our shape. I've rounded over the edge. But I want to give it a little bit more. Uh, a real shark is not going to have a perfectly flat head, so I will do some work there. The fins are going to be slightly off from the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand these guys down, and I want to do something with the tail as well. Okay, that might not look like much, but it's just going to give me a guide on um, when I use my sander. And of course, these guys do have a dorsal fin, which I'm not going to, you're not really going to see it, but I can give the impression of it because we're looking at the top down. That should be okay. All right, get the sander out. Alright, angle grinder, flap disc, respirator, goggles, safety gloves, let's crack on. Right, that is mostly that. Give it a bit of shape. Uh, I'm going to do some more with fire. Use a regular torch, regular lighter. Off we go. Okay, now we've got a crispy little shark. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to use a couple different things. I'm going to start with a scrub brush, get most of the coal off. These are uh, 
purple scouring pads. Um, I cut them, put them on a mandrel, stick them in my Dremel, they spin, work great. So I'm going to do it first time with just the brush and you'll see it'll get the charcoal off and it'll give a nice dark brown. Okay, that's the first one. Now if you can tell on the video that all these dark ridges are now uh, appear to be raised. So I've burnt off all the uh, uh, soft growth in between them. So you've already got a really nice smooth texture. Okay, moving on to the Dremel and the uh, scour pads. But I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. So what I'm going to do now is add some color. Now this is uh, fusion paint. It's great stuff. I get this locally from a friend of mine. She runs a store called uh, Home Revival. Sarah Bailey and she sells these. This, this is quite as expensive. It's about 20 pounds a pot. But you only use drops. Alright, so I don't use a brush. I like to use a cloth. I'm just going to dip it. Rub it in. Now you can get different effects with this if you want. This is where you're going to have to uh, play. If you wipe down the wood with water first, uh, you're going to remove some of the dryness of the wood. That means you're going to get less absorbance with the paint. Um, you can soak it so you just get a real just faint highlight of it. There's all things you can do. I'll just give you a rough idea and then you guys can go off and play. Alright, that's the whole of Mr. Shark. I'll just leave it like that for a bit and uh, Give them a wipe. Right, I think I'm actually just going to add a few little dabs of a turquoise to that as well. I'm going to see what kind of effect I'm going to get. It's always good to play, experiment a bit. You never know. All right, I've let that sit for about five minutes. Now I'm going to take a little piece of cloth and I'm going to give it a rub. I'm just going to damp it first because there's no paint on here. Yeah, just a damp piece of cloth and a rub. It's a nice mix of colors in there. I think I'm going to go slightly more invasive. So I'm just going to use a little piece of that red scrubbing cloth. Now what I'll do is I'm going to let that dry and then I'll do a, a, a nice shellac finish on it. All right, the next step is going to be, uh, well two steps left, um, shellac it and do the keyhole slot in the back. Right, that's the keyhole slot. All right, um, so that means you can hang that way or you can hang upside down. What I do is reposition the camera. I look where the rough center of balance is, and I just use my two fingers, and I go for where I want it to be. 
Yeah, so if I want it to hang like that, let's go on the back, make a little mark with a pen. Get a straight edge. And just uh, give me a routing reference. Alright, that is the keyhole bit. Pop it in the old router base. Check the depth. Want it to be maybe you know, six millimeters down, not too deep, not too shallow. And then I just look at my line and I freehand it. There is my keyhole slot. I'll take Mr. Hair off the wall. And Sharky. And there we go. He's all done. Yeah, if you don't like the way he's hanging like that, you can bring him back, position him a little bit differently, and you can hang him different. Okay, I'm going to use the shellac sanding sealer. Stuff is not cheap, but it is, um, it's great. I love the way it works. Gives a great, gives a great finish. Uh, the first one or two, I'll just do with a rag. Um, I will sand after I get the second one, just with like a, a really light 240 grit. And then I'll get the third coat on it, and she'll be done. I don't worry too much about fingerprints on this. So I will uh, keep wiping and I'll sand over it at the end. Alright, so that's that. That's basically how I do them. I hope you guys found that somewhat informative, interesting. As for shapes, look online anywhere. You'll find something you like. Print it out, get onto your board. And then just play with it. Remember I said we just wanted the hint of that back fin? I think it's come out really nice. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Bye.